Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome on the Culture News. My name is David Savivo, and I have the pleasure to have today on my heart radio a very, very, very talented woman. Her name is Lee Broda. Let me spell it for you. B-R-O-D-A. She is a wonderful, wonderful actress, producer, and writer, and poet, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful, accomplished woman. She has produced very, very important uh, movies. We're going to talk about all of that, but she's also participated as an actress, of course, in many of these. And she has written a lot of beautiful things. And she's also a great advocate for a lot of beautiful things that are finally uh, going for a change. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet my guest of the day, the wonderful, the gorgeous, Lee Broda. Mm -hmm. Lee, how are you today, dear? I'm good, David. Thank you for having me. It's an honor, it's a pleasure, and it's a privilege. Thank you so much for being with me over the phone today. So I would love to know, before we start to talk about your accomplishments and, and all the great things that you're doing, I would love to know about yourself. Can you tell me where you're from? And how did you start in this industry? Of course. Um, I'm Israeli. I was born and raised in a small town south of Tel Aviv. And I was always, um, I was born on the stage. I was always a dancer and an actress. I was performing in Israel um, for many years and dancing in a company and, and traveling the world a little bit with a dance company. And, uh, I uh, moved to the States when I was 20, so I served in the military back in Israel, and when I finished my military service, I uh, decided I wanted to move to the States and pursue pursue this um, here, because I really loved English, and I always felt like the possibilities here were endless. Um, so yeah, I moved here on my own when I was 20, and I uh, went to school here for uh, three and a half years in LA. And uh, slowly got in the in the industry, um, you know, with an agent and a manager. And uh, I was interning for a casting director and for a producer, and really learned everything, um, you know, through them, through all these experiences that I had and the many opportunities that came my way. Wow. Well, shalom aleichem. <laughs> shalom. <laughs> so, yeah, shalom. congratulations. Kol uh, akavod for you, uh, for your um, uh, accomplishment and for, and, and for coming. There is some, you know, this is one thing that people should also see. The, you know, with the, we are at a time where we're discussing about do we need immigrants, immigrants, are there good things, but here we are, here we have um, a great immigrant such as yourself and that has created as a producer, I don't know how many thousands of, of jobs for the American people who have also them pay taxes and your company pay taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So you have mm-hmm. contributed so much to the American economy. And I think this is something that people should be uh, reminded of. And, I'm, and this is a beautiful uh, that I like to call beautiful American story. So um, I would like to talk now. So how was the switch from you to go from actress to producer? Um, well, when I was acting, I realized that there's many hurdles and obstacles that I'll have to kind of conquer in order to establish myself here in Hollywood. So I started producing small projects. So I did a few shorts. My, fir- my first short helped me get my SAG card. I got a team together, financed it with my own money while I was working as a server um, and going to school. And that's how I got my first reel. And that helped me get my first agent and manager presentation because I really created a short that was complementing my acting skills. Um, and showcasing me in the best way. So I started doing shorts, and uh, one of them I actually wrote. Um, it started actually as a school project, and then I put it on camera. We did it for the stage. And um, and then I realized I was really good with bringing people together. I was really good with getting things for, for cheap and free and kind of 
getting people excited to collaborate and come together to create art. Um, and then I remember I was doing a little bit of TV and movies as an actress. And again, I found myself kind of waiting on other people and, and I was getting really impatient. Um, so I started reaching out to casting directors and I met a producer that had a really wonderful project that he was just telling me about because I was casting from the studio. And I emailed him and told him that I would love to be involved in a project in whatever capacity he would like me to. Um, and it's been like two months and I haven't heard from him. And then I emailed him again two months later. I was like, I really want to help you with this project. And he called me to his office the same day. And then I ended up working with him for about four years later. So he really taught me everything about the financing world and how to raise money and how to to get movies, um, execute movies uh, from a financing standpoint, not only the creative. And um, from there, things happened really quickly for me. Um, so I think I was always juggling kind of right brain, left brain. Um, Cause I was really good with numbers when I was, when I went to school and, but I always had that creative side of writing and performing. And I felt like producing was complementing both. I get to do creative and I get to do the financing and uh, I really like deal making. So it's, uh, it's an opportunity to be able to do both. And indeed you, you are doing it uh, really, really wonderfully. Uh, and I'm and, and it's such a beautiful um, story, and I love how you say, "I would love to to, to help in any capacity." <laughs> yeah, really I really put myself way. out there. I was like, "I exactly. work free, whatever you need me to. I just want to learn." But that's beautiful. I, wanna, I love to hear yeah. that because you know nowadays in in in, in the U.S. we we have. You know, people who think that, okay, they have a diploma as an actor and next year they're going to be on Broadway, you know. So they they don't understand that it's a long process and, that, you know, you have to, you know, as I always say, first, you know, when I started in business, I needed to be good already just to bring the coffee to the to the assistant who brought the coffee to the boat, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> when you start to do that well, then maybe <laughs> you, you, you can move forward, you know. No, but it's I love true. Your, your, yeah, I love your humility, and I love how um, you, you built yourself too. And you know what, guys? There's no secret. This is how high it is. When you look at people's resume and after you talk to people and, and you hear it in the speech right away why they made it. That so I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that it matches. Mm. <laughs> so um, yeah. one, one one thing I would like to ask you. So yeah, so you learn all the skills as a as a producer. Um, you learn uh, the financial part. Uh, do you believe that now is a good time to be a producer? Because with all these uh, platforms, like people definitely need now. Um, there is a with a hunger, and and I don't mean that in the a uh, derogative way, but really a, a hunger for new material. Like you have Netflix who, who need like new movies, new series, new material. Do you think it's a good time now to be a producer? I think it's always a great time to do what you love. And if it's really coming from a place of passion and, and love for the art and making movies, I feel like people always will find their, their place. Um, I think it's it's a mix. Uh, I feel like that's the conversation I'm having a lot these past months and I think over a year now. Um, I think the TV world is expanding and there's so many opportunities now um, for different for different uh, forms of, of of TV, right? There are short forms and long forms and so much content out there. So a lot of producers are transitioning for the, in the past three, four years into TV and creating brilliant shows. So I think in that world, there's a lot of opportunities. And now in the film world, we can definitely feel the effects of TV because it's harder to get actors because actors now are on TV shows for a much longer period of time. So they're not available as much to do movies. And 
they get paid so much on TV. So the competition is really difficult to get the right actor in order to make a finance plan work to make a movie. Um, and I think also the foreign market is changing because now here in the States, you will make a movie and it doesn't always end up in theaters. Um, it might end up on Amazon or Netflix or other platforms. So in the foreign market, um, which is the rest of the um, countries in the world, really depend on the distribution here in the U.S. So that gets yeah, sometimes tricky. And um, you used to be able to sell movies, um, pre-sell them before you shop them. And now we see that way of financing movies is kind of fading and disappearing slowly. So I feel like it's always about adapting to what's happening in the world and the trends. And if, and if you're not able to, you find yourself in a really tough spot of not able to make, to make as many movies as you used to or for the same budget that you used to. So I feel like a lot of us producers are sometimes concerned and we, you know, reflect on that often about how do we see the change and how can we adapt and what can we do differently in order to make, to keep making movies. Um, wow. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think it's a great time, but it's also a different time. Um, and yeah. you really have to stay on top of your game and stay flexible and, and creative. And I feel like you and find ways. And indeed, you stay, you stay very creative indeed. I just want to say for our audience, the kind of movies that you have um, produced. So there is A Private War, which I really love, a uh, great movie, and also uh, the Kinder, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the Kinder, the, uh, I'm sorry, Garden, kinder teacher. Garden, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> teacher, I'm so sorry. Uh, kinder Garden, Garten, not garden, garden teacher. What does it mean, kindergarten? The kindergarten teacher? Uh, yeah, so these two movies I uh, executive produced um, in 2018. A Private War actually came out in 2019, and we were we got two nominations for the Golden Globe. Um, and this is one of the movies that I'm so proud of and really fought to get involved, um, fought for to get involved with. Um, but yes, these are, uh, they're both actually stories about women, which I'm so excited to be able to tell more stories like that. Because in my first, I think, 30, 30 um, movies, I found that a lot of them weren't, didn't have a lot of um, roles that were featuring women, or I didn't work with a female director. And with the kindergarten teacher, um, we had a female director that is brilliant, Sarah, and um, I, I, I fight now to try and work with more women because um, I'm a big advocate for that as well. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, Private War, we shot in uh, Jordan in the UK, and uh, the kindergarten teacher we shot in New York. It's actually based on an Israeli movie called um, Hagen Nenet, which is the kindergarten teacher in Hebrew that uh, did really great in the international uh, market um, and film festivals. And the remake um, was done here in the U.S. Wow. No, but indeed, indeed, these are really phenomenal movies. And I see that, so you just finished to wrap um, a great movie that I'm sure is going to be great. It's called Tesla, about, uh, you know, the Eric Tesla. And there is... Uh, the Informer coming in 2019, and then I'm seeing a movie, a title on your IMDb that I can't wait to see the happening. That is called Lansky, about Megan Lansky. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, like one of the biggest um, Jewish uh, gangster, I would say. Um, <laughs> yes. Right, who created Las Vegas, by the way? You know. Um, yeah. He did. Las Vegas. Did, yeah, yeah, he did really, really a lot, a lot of stuff. So, um, can you tell us about uh, Lansky? Sure. Um, so Lansky tells a story about Mayor Lansky, like you said, the Jewish gangster that started Murder Inc. in the 1930s and 40s in New York, and from there he expanded um, to start Vegas uh, with his Murder Inc. gang, um, Bugsy and. Uh, and the rest of them. But yeah, he has a brilliant 
story about how he started. He was a brilliant guy that was really good with numbers. And they took over New York. Uh, he was a really tough guy that actually had a big heart because he was uh, a big donor to Israel and he was trying to support um, Israel. But he also was a big part of helping fighting the Nazis in the 1940s when they were trying to uh, get to the U.S. Um, we have a brilliant scene in the movie about that um, that I'm so excited uh, to see when we get to shoot it. But um, yeah, so the the movie really talks about David, a reporter that goes and interview uh, Meyer Lansky. Uh, and through the interview, uh, you are able to kind of dive into the magnificent story of his life. And um, yeah, super excited. It's based on a um, obviously on his life and the book that the director's dad wrote called, uh, but he was good to his mother about Marlansky and other uh, Jewish gangsters. So, yeah. Wow, I can't it. wait. <laughs> Save me a seat in the movie theater, okay? Because <laughs> okay, I will be the first will. one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a great movie. Plus, you have such a good cast already um, that is uh, already announced. And I'm saying one of the greatest actors of all time, Harvey Kittel. Uh, there is also um, Sam Worthington, Emory Cohen. I mean, it, it looks good. And the director, Eitan Rockaway. So it, it looks really, really good. You know, when, you know, when you have a movie that looks already good on the paper, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it makes before, it easier. Yeah. Later yeah. It, it's sure. like, I mean, what, what worse can happen when we put, Harvey Kittel and Sam Worthington. Like, what worse can happen? You can only have um, a great, great, great movie. So um, we are approaching toward the end of this great interview, and I would love to know, is there anything you want to talk about? Um, yes. Uh, so you talked a little bit about uh, what I do with women, and I started this organization called Women Creating Change that uh, bridges Israeli and Arab female filmmakers. Um, and we actually have a big event in LA, so I don't know who's listening, but I would love uh, to invite people to it, and it's called yes, Stand Up us, For Her. Yes, tell us when and where. It's, uh, it's August 24th here in LA, um, and they can follow us on uh, womencreatingchange.com or I always share things in my Instagram, Lee Broda. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful evening of uh, celebrating female storytellers in different art forms. Uh, it's visual arts, stand up comedy, poetry. Um, I'll be sharing some poems from my book, Whispers from the Moon, and with a lot of other wonderful, wonderful uh, storytellers. So, yeah, that one is happening in August, and um, would love to uh, have people check it out. And we will definitely be there to, to support you and uh, definitely um, encourage you in every single thing that you are doing because you're very, very talented and very hardworking. And I love this, this great thing that you said about um, women of uh, different uh, origins, bringing, doing work together, creating work together. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really something that I definitely support. And if you want to call again and talk about it, this is your radio show every time. Oh, okay? I love that. Thank you yeah, so much. My pleasure. Vibakasha, vibakasha. So, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Cerrero. I had the pleasure to have today on iHeartRadio, on the Culture News, the very talented Lee Broda. Follow her on Instagram, <laughs> Instagram.com, slash Lee Broda, L -E -E, Broda, B -R -B -S -S -Boy, R O D A. Lee Broda. Follow, follow her. And we have a lot of uh, investors who are listening to the show, and I believe to um, invest in a movie that is produced by Lee Broda is a great thing that you can do. Trust me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, more music to follow now on my heart radio. Stay tuned. <laughs> 